Hello and welcome everybody. Thanks for um, joining me for this video on how to install Laravel. Or I'm sorry, how to actually get the Laravel, our first Laravel application up and running. So we're actually not gonna go into a super crazy in-depth programming tutorial today. What we're gonna do is just start by learning how to create a new Laravel application. And then in the next videos, we're actually gonna go into how to customize it to make um, like a, a small blog. So we're actually gonna learn how to program in the future videos. But right now, the first thing we need to do is just get Laravel up and running. So hopefully you've been following along. You should at this point already have Composer installed. Go ahead, just uh, humor me here and go ahead and type Composer into your terminal window. If you don't have terminal up and running, you can just um, you can find terminal in your applications. Go to your applications, the very bottom of your applications, you'll have utilities, and then near the bottom of that, the third to the last, you'll have terminal, and then that'll open up your terminal. Now, if you've never used terminal before, or made any changes to the settings, it's very likely that it's white background with black text, and that's okay. It doesn't mean any different. I just have mine set with a black background and white text, just because that's the way I like it. Um, doesn't make any difference. So why don't you humor me here? Let's go ahead and type Composer just to make sure that Composer is working. So I'll go ahead and type Composer and click Enter. And as you can see, if you scroll up, you should get a really cool Composer thing here. And then you should get a whole bunch of commands. If you see any of this, you don't even need to verify it's the same thing. If you're not getting an error that says Composer is not a valid function or something along those lines or cannot find... Um, you know, bash error or something like that, that means you got a problem. If you see anything other than that, you see something like this, you're good. So that means we have Composer installed. Next, let's go ahead, oh, real quick, if you have do not have Composer installed, go ahead and click right over here, and you can learn how to install Composer. Okay, so if you've got Composer installed, the next thing we wanna do is make sure Laravel is installed. So you should be able to type Laravel, click Enter, and you should get something that looks like this. So once again, Laravel installer, and you've got a bunch of options for um, things you can do with the installer for Laravel. So you should be able to just type Laravel and then click enter and get this. Now, if you don't, if this isn't working for you, that means you don't have Laravel correctly installed. What I'd ask you to do is go ahead and click this video over here. This video is gonna take you through how to, um, how to install Laravel correctly and get this, this Laravel command working. So if, you ha ha if this is not working, go ahead, get over there, let's get you caught up and get Laravel installed, and then you can come back to this video. Perfect, so if you're following along still, that means you have Composer installed, you have Laravel installed. It is time to actually create a Laravel application. Now I'm gonna go ahead and clear my screen here. You can do that as well, it's just Command K, we'll do that. Um, clears that history, we're gonna start with something fresh. Next, let's go ahead and um, we gotta do some basic commands. Now this video is not gonna be an in-depth tutorial on how to use terminal, but we're gonna learn two basic commands. CD, which is for change directory, and LS, which means for list files. So, the first thing we need to do is just understand what you're looking at here. You can see here that we have got a squiggly line. This squiggly line means that we're at the base of our computer. So, we literally have nothing, we're right at the base of the, of the computer. Um, and then Jay Curtis is just the user that I'm using. So go ahead and type ls, and this will list all the files in your base. You can see that we have our application, our downloads, um, our Dropbox, and so forth. Now I wanna just show you something here. I'm gonna open up Finder and do go home, and open that up right here. And look what, uh, look what we're seeing here. This is pretty cool. It's the exact same thing. Do you guys see that? So we've got applications. We have Creative Cloud files, desktop, documents, and you can see that it's all the exact same as you come down. We're actually looking at the exact same thing here as we are here. And that's what I wanna show you guys, is I want you guys to understand that when you work in the terminal, you're literally just, I mean, it's no different than working, say, in Finder. Finder is just a visual representation of using terminal. And this way your grandma and grandpa can use Finder, um, they can act, they can you know move around and save files and manage file structure without needing to know all these commands and that's why we have that basically. But just understand that you're doing the exact same thing when you're in the terminal that you are doing in the Finder. It's literally basically the same thing except that as you start to learn more about the terminal, you'll learn that it has a lot of extra features that the Finder does not have built in. The Finder just has a really pretty skin on it um, is an, an, and is a little more user friendly. So the next thing we're gonna learn, so by the way, when I click LS, we're just listing everything that's in the current directory we're in. So we were in the home directory, we listed everything, and sure enough, we get the exact same thing. 
Now what I wanna do is come into this sites folder. So you can see sites here and you can see sites right here. So because you can see that, what we wanna do is just go into this folder. We also call this a directory. So we're gonna click CD and then we're gonna type sites. Go ahead and click enter. And the only thing that changes here is in instead of a squiggly here, we have it just says sites. Okay, so that means we're in the currently in the sites directory. Now I'm gonna come in here over to the terminal. I'm just gonna follow along so you can see this. Um, in sites, it says my playground.playground. That's just, uh, this is an Xcode type of program. Now you may not have a sites folder. I forgot to mention that. If you don't have a sites folder, you need to make a sites folder. So what you can do is you can do mkdir make directory only don't do it here you're gonna to want to do it back uh, back here so we're gonna go cd dot dot that goes up a file folder now we're back in the home directory you can see here we're back in the home directory let's say you don't have a sites folder right so you clicked ls and you have all these but you don't have a sites folder and you may not have some of these you might not have creative cloud but let's say you don't have a sites folder well you need to make a sites folder so you don't need to make a sites folder it's just that i choose to store all of my Laravel applications and all my websites in a folder called sites. And you can see here that um, Mac actually supports a folder called sites, even though it's not created by default. And it even has an icon here, a little Safari icon. So as soon as you make a folder called sites, you can do that two ways. You can just click new folder and name it sites, capital S I T E S, or you can just do it through the terminal. And so to do it here, all you would do is you do make directory, MK DIR and then I'm just going to name it site just so that it can actually make we can actually make it um, and you can see since I already have a sites folder I can't make a new one but we're going to do make directory and I'm going to call it site and then click enter and you can see that it made a folder called site so you're going to want to do sites with an S at the end and then you should get a folder just like this and then from here you should be able to type LS and you should now have your sites folder okay so you can see my new one here is site Okay, now you have a sites folder. So let's CD into our sites folder. Now you should see, instead of a squiggly, which is the home directory, we have sites, and that means we're in the sites folder. If you type ls, you can see the, fold, the files that are already in our sites folder. As we would expect, there's just one called playground. And we're gonna go ahead and create our Laravel application. So to do this, we're gonna type la Laravel, and then space, new, and this tells Laravel to make a new Laravel um, application. And then we're going to call it test in this case. So we're gonna do Laravel new test and click enter. Now what you're gonna see is it starts crafting the application. It's gonna create it. And you can see that it does all sorts of stuff here, including generating a key. And um, at the end it says application ready, build something amazing. So what this means is that we literally have a Laravel application running now and all created. That's how awesome Laravel is, that it just gets you set up that quickly. So um, I'm going to take a look inside our test folder and you can see here we have a lot of different folders and we can do the same thing here in the terminal. So we're going to change now. We're still in our sites folder. We need to get into the test folder. So do CD tests and then type LS. Now we're in test. You can see here and type LS and you can see all the exact same things that we see here and we can see the textual comp um, compilation over, over here. So this is exactly everything we need to get running with Laravel. Now that we're in our test folder, we can actually launch Laravel and start running it on a local server here. So let's go ahead and do that. So to do that, we're gonna do PHP. We're telling the command line, we're gonna use PHP. There's some commands called Artisan and Artisan is all the command line options for Laravel. So Laravel is um, the framework designed by artisans, I think is their catch, time, catch line. And um, so the Artisan is the command line interface for Laravel. So there's, we're going to say do php artisan and then one of the commands you can use is called serve and this means uh, to launch a local server and as soon as we do that you can see it says laravel development server started at localhost 8000 so what this means is that we're currently running a server with the new and the test application is running on this local server now this doesn't mean your friends can look at this website um, it's purely local it's not connected to the outside internet but um, it allows you to easily test the application and actually see it in a browser and this will become immensely useful for us down the road Now now what I'm gonna do next is um, we're just gonna create a new window and um, I'm just gonna use Chrome here and we're gonna go to localhost 8000 and actually what you can do is you can just copy this here 
and then paste it in here and click enter. And you can see as soon as we do that, that we're, it says Laravel 5, and that's just the splash page, that's the HTML that they've created um, for the default Laravel applications. Now obviously we don't want this down the road, and I understand that, um, and so we're gonna go through and customize it, but for now, you can see that that's all we needed to start launching a Laravel application, and it's literally running on a test server. All right, so that basically concludes this video. What we've done here is, actually one quick thing before we conclude the video, let's, um, you're gonna realize that you actually no longer have commands. You cannot type your CD or LS commands anymore in your terminal because it's currently running this test server. Okay, so we actually don't have the normal um, prompt like we normally do, and that's because we're running the test server. So I can refresh this, and every time I refresh it, you can see it does another request to the server. And um, we, in order to stop the server so we can use the rest of our um, terminal again, you just need to do Control and then C. So you can see as soon as you do Control C, it quits the um, server and then gets back to your normal um, terminal. So then from here, we can do all sorts of different commands. So that basically concludes the video. In this video, we learned how to make a Laravel application, just a default one, but you can see how quick and easy it is to get it up and running and to be able to test it on a local server. Now, if you've come from other frameworks in the past, you may appreciate how awesome this is. And if you haven't, just trust me when I say it's awesome because a lot of other um, a lot of other frameworks need require a lot of work to get to this point. So the fact that it was this simple is is just awesome and shows you how what a treat you are in for in the future when working with Laravel. Now, this is your first time watching one of my videos. I would please urge you to subscribe. I love subscribers, obviously, because I, I love sharing this knowledge with everybody. And we've got some really good videos coming up. We're gonna be doing, first of all, we're gonna do a basic blog and just kinda show you how to make a blog with Laravel really, really quickly to get your toes wet with Laravel 5. And then after that, we're gonna be doing a really advanced application that's actually, it's actually the exact same application I'm gonna be making for my SaaS company that I'm gonna be launching here soon. And um, I'm actually gonna walk through how to build that with Laravel. So it's gonna get into some really advanced stuff like user authentication and um, act connecting with Twitter. It's gonna be a Twitter app type application and um, all sorts of stuff like that. And so it gets, we're gonna get into some really advanced stuff with Laravel. And so if you really wanna learn, this is gonna be a hands-on opportunity to learn step by step how to make an extremely advanced application, which is not something I see in a lot of tutorials. So if that sounds like something interesting to you, please subscribe and click like on this video. That just kind of shows me that there's interest there. And I'm actually making this video because of interest from my previous subscribers that requested it. So um, I love to hear from you. Reach out to me on Twitter as well and tell me what, you, um, what you'd like to see more of. My Twitter URL is just at underscore J A Curtis. Okay, so don't forget the underscore and then J-A-C-U-R-T-I-S. Sorry, my dog is dropping his bone in the background. And um, anyway, love to hear from you guys. Thanks so much for watching this video. Subscribe if you haven't. And I will see you in the next video where we start learning some um, how to actually customize Laravel and we're gonna make our own blogging application. So I'll see you then. Peace.